Sometimes we have problems we don't want to do, like when we have to complete the square with fractions or when A is not equal to one. So to help you out for those types of problems, that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video is just to kind of go through those problems that are just so not, not so much fun, but sometimes we just have to do them if that is the result that we are looking for. So let's go ahead and work on some completing the square problems to find the vertex that are just not so fun. So the first example I want to do in this video is Y is equal to a three X squared minus an 18 X plus a 14. All right. So remember completing the square, we got to be able to take find our B divided by two and then square it. But before we can do that, we got to make sure our A is equal to one. So there's a couple different ways we could approach this problem like this, but the way that I like to do um, this problem or what I like to do when I'm trying to keep things in vertex form is just factor out the three from the first two terms. I'm not going to worry about this with the 14. So Y is equal to a three and I'm going to have an X squared. Now three, when I factor out a three, that's going to leave me with a negative six X and then plus a 14. All right. I'll worry about this 14 later. You could, um, you could also rewrite this in terms of like thirds. Cause that's kind of be, um, well, we'll, we'll get to that actually. Never mind. We'll get to that later. That's for the fraction ones. So I'll worry about that later. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to divide by three because then I'd have like a fraction and it's in my opinion in this, in this type of problem, it'd be too much work. So now I have my quadratic, right? Where my a is equal to one, right? You can see there's a little one right there. So now I can take my B right and divide it by two and square it. So this zero, I have a negative six divided by two squared. So negative six divided by two is a negative three, negative three squared is equal to nine. So just remember, we're going to add that to both inside my parentheses and out. And I need to, sorry, don't add it inside both or add it to both. I need to add it inside my parentheses and then subtract it outside, right? So what we're doing is we're adding and subtracting on the same side, but don't make this mistake. I almost did it. Remember guys, you actually didn't add a nine. You added a nine that because of distributive property is being multiplied by a three. So when you subtract the nine, you also have to multiply it by a three. Okay. So remember we're at, we got to keep this equation, you know, equal. So when you add that nine, multiply by three, when you subtract the nine, multiply by three. And then in this case, you have a positive 14. Okay. Y is equal to a three. Now in this case, we can um, factor this down. So that's going to be an X minus three quantity squared nine, negative nine times three is going to be negative 27. So that's where negative 27 plus a 14, negative 27 plus 14 is going to be a negative 13. So Y is equal to a three times X minus three quantity squared minus a 13. So therefore now it is in vertex form. My vertex here is going to be a positive three, negative 13. I don't know why I'm not writing that like that. So that's going to be positive three, negative 13. There you go. So that is example number one. Let's go ahead and do it again. That was fun. Uh, but this case, let's, uh, let's not do anything we need to factor out. Let's do in this case when we have some fractions because everybody loves fractions, right? So the reason why this is going to have fractions is because my middle term is not divisible by two right? Remember what we do here. My A is equal to one. That's the first thing we want to look for. Then the next thing we've got to look for is our middle term, right? And in this case, my middle term is not divisible by two. So we're going to have some fractions, but that's okay. So negative two divided by negative five divided by two is not divisible, but we can square it, right? And therefore that's going to give me a 25 over a four. Whew. Okay. So we have 25 over four. Now, again, just like we did before, we're going to add and subtract those in both. Now we don't need to worry about the multiplying out. That's at least kind of cool. So in this case, now I have a X squared minus a five X plus a 25 over four. And then remember you have to subtract it minus a 25 over four and then plus a seven. So this is what I was kind of alluding to in the previous example. Sometimes it's just better to rewrite the seven in terms of in fourths, right? So what I mean by that is, you know, seven is equal to, we got to put this as common denominators. If we're going to combine these, right? Add and subtract, they got to have common denominators. So just remember that um, seven. So if I multiply is that it's going to be the same thing as a 28 over four, right? Isn't 28 divided by four or seven? Yeah, but this has a denominator four. So what I can do is I can just rewrite the equation. So I'll rewrite everything just so you guys can see that progression again. A um, little note to the title. Um, but, you know, a lot of times if you just kind of do that side work on your own, you can, you can kind of skip this step. All right, you can just kind of do it already in there and say, oh, that's 28 or four. Just make sure you do your work correctly, right? We don't want to get that. You don't want to make that mistake because um, that can be a very small mistake, but obviously you'd get your whole answer wrong. Um, so now we need to factor this down and that looks pretty confusing. So how do we factor something down with fractions? This was kind of easy to factor down, right? Hopefully if you have experience with um, completing the square, perfect square trinomials and factoring, you can complete the square down. You can factor this down pretty easily. 
But this one might be a little bit difficult. So the important thing I want you to recognize here is when we have a perfect square trinomial, this x minus um, b divided by two. So basically what this is, when you're trying to factor something down, when you're factoring down these perfect square trinomials, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this in like red. So when you're trying to factor down a perfect square trinomial, your answer is either gonna be one of these forms, x plus or minus a b divided by two squared. Okay, so what we need to do then is determine how do we know if it's positive or negative? Well, all we need to determine if it's positive or negative, come on, is by looking at your middle term. If my middle term is negative, then my binomial is going to be negative. If my middle term is positive, then my binomial is going to be positive. Now, what was my b divided by 2? Well, let's go over here, right? Now, again, it kind of gets a little tricky. Well, kind of gets a little tricky here. We're not going to really worry about the negative in the sense. Um, but I guess actually you could. You could just take it as actually... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I guess mathematically, I could explain it a little bit differently in better mathematically form, uh, but to kind of like overly, not, not overly confuse the subject, I'll just leave this as a plus or minus and then take your B over two, right? So from five over two, we know that it's a negative, right? Cause that middle term. So therefore I can rewrite this as a Y times a X minus a five halves quantity squared. Then over here, negative 25 force plus 28 force is going to be a three-fourths. So now I can identify my vertex here as a positive five-halves, positive three-fourths, right? So just little fractions, but that's okay. We're all good. All right, let's go ahead and work on uh, one more example. Now let's kind of combine these together, right? The, <laughs> the worst of both solutions. So two times x squared plus a three x plus one. Now at first you might think, oh, this problem's not that bad. You just factor out the two, like small numbers, right? But it's deceiving. Because again, when you factor out the two, like we did in this last example, again, notice my middle term. It's not divisible by a two. So now I have to rewrite that as a three halves X. Now this one, you could divide everything by two, like and do that on both sides, but that's usually a way when I want to solve, I used to like that technique. In this case, I'm just going to kind of keep things the way that I um, previously taught them. All right. So now I have my a is equal to one. That's good. So now I can take my b divided by two squared. Now, again, some students will get confused because now your b is a fraction, <laughs> right? So again, it's okay. All you're simply going to do in this case is just go ahead and uh, multiply by the reciprocal of your denominator. And when you do that, what you'll now have, say three over four, right? Quantity squared. All right. So now what we need to do is three over four quantity squared. Um, so therefore that is going to equal here a nine sixteenths. Okay. So remember we got to add that on both sides, right? Or uh, add and subtract it. So we have Y times two times an X squared plus a three halves X plus a nine sixteenths minus a nine sixteenths. But don't forget this two here, right? Got to multiply by two because when you added the nine sixteenths, that was multiplied by two. So when you subtract the nine sixteenths, that needs to be multiplied by two. And then you need to add a one. Um, you know what? I'm going to put that in blue, light blue, so we know that's kind of different. Okay. Don't want to be confused. Um, all right. So now let's factor this down. Remember that idea of the B divided by two, guys, right? Remember the B divided by two? So what was my B divided by two? Everything got simplified. It was three-fourths. And again, the middle term is positive, so it's X plus three-fourths. So I have a y is equal to a two times an x plus a three fourths quantity squared. All right, now in this one, we got some fraction work. Uh, so I have a, now again, this two over 16 can be reduced to one ninth, right? Or I'm sorry, one not one ninth, one eighth. Yes, one eighth. So therefore I can reduce this to nine over an eight. Let's rewrite it like that. And then what I can do is I can rewrite a one as an eight over eight. Now they have common denominators and therefore that's a negative one ninth, right? Negative nine over eight plus eight over eight. So therefore that's a minus a one ninth. And now you can see guys, that is going to be my vertex. Why am I doing an eight? That's not an eight. There you go. Negative one eight. So now you can say my vertex here is a negative three fourths comma a negative one eighth. Let's just go ahead and fix that real quick because that looks really bad. Sorry about that. So one eighth and one eighth. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, then I look forward to seeing you in the next video.